On average, a household recycles 27.5 pounds of plastic per month. That is a whole lot of seed starting containers you could be getting for free. I will admit I'm guilty of this. I have thrown away a ton of containers. I just didn't think about reusing everyday items at the time. So in today's video, I'm going to show you five items you can save around your house that you can collect and start your seeds in this year. So the first household item I've got is something you use every day to either blow your nose or wipe your butt. And it is toilet paper rolls. So this is roughly two weeks worth of collecting them. And I've got eight of them here. And then you can take it one step further. And these are paper towel rolls. With the paper towel rolls, they are longer and you can get two or three of them out of the same size of this. So what I like to do is take my toilet paper rolls, line them up, and all you do is cut them to the same length. So yeah, it equals to be perfect. These are just regular trays you can buy at any of your nurseries. As you can tell, they don't shake around, so it's gonna be perfect, all the same length. The option, if you don't have these kind of containers, is put them in a bigger tray or whatever you've got and put an elastic band around the whole thing. The elastic band will keep them all together and your toilet paper rolls together will be stronger. So I'll show you here. So this is kind of what looks like just the top down. It's in kind of like that. So for these seeds, I am going to choose a tomato. They're about the time. No. Furnace, you turn off right now. No. Worst timing, no. And it will get messy, so don't worry about that. So there are a few things to watch out for when you do start your seeds in toilet paper rolls. Normally I bottom water, but for toilet paper rolls, I only top water. And that's because if you bottom water, the water will wick up and actually get into the toilet paper rolls themselves. And you'll find that they'll go soggy and most of your toilet paper rolls will break apart before you can do anything with your seedlings. That's also the reason why I put it in this container. So one of the last things that I'm gonna be doing, which I didn't do last year, I'm gonna be putting a humidity dome I'm just going to snug it on and there'll be about an inch between the tray and the paper towel rolls to have some air movement. So hopefully keep the paper towels dry, but keep the seed starting mix moist. I can already tell that some of the toilet paper rolls are getting wet. Hopefully it doesn't ruin anything, but we'll find out. The second thing that I'm going to be trying my seeds in are coffee cups. Normally I drink coffee at home in a mug. Over the past five or six months, every time I do go out to grab a cup of coffee, I've been saving the cups. I'm excited to try starting my seeds in here this year. So they do not have holes at the bottom. So the very first step is to stack them up and drill holes from the top. So the next thing you guys can reuse, if you're a big partier, or if you have friends that throw parties, maybe a Thanksgiving party, birthday party, that kind of thing, are solo cups. For these cups, I grow a different vegetable in each color just to keep track of it. As you can tell, these ones were Manitoba tomatoes, and I gave these cups away to friends and family, anyone that needed tomato plants last year. And I found that the depth of these guys are really good. Anything can thrive in it. This year I'm gonna try broccoli and cauliflower and a few other varieties just to see if they work better in here. So I'm going to grow tomatoes in here as well. So I'm gonna put my seed starting mix about halfway, plant my seeds, and then as the tomato plant grows, I'm just gonna add more seed starting mix. This will be big enough for pretty much any vegetable you grow as long as you're transplanting it outdoors when the weather's right. So out of all the containers that I was able to collect over the five or six months, these guys are the ones that I'm the most excited about. My kids eat a ton of yogurt. These are just different size of yogurt containers. This one's actually a sour cream container. Same thing, they're the same style of containers. This one's a shallow one, tall, long ones. And then these guys are more narrow ones. So I'm gonna be using these guys for the crops or the vegetables that are gonna be in there for the longest. So I'm gonna do tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, and peppers, any of the warm season crops. For the last way of starting seeds from the household items, I've got egg cartons. I tried starting seeds and made a video about it a couple years ago. And one of the things that I found, just like the toilet paper rolls, was it got extremely soggy, but I also drenched the crap out of the container itself. I'm gonna try starting the seeds and only top water, just like with the toilet paper rolls and only in the middle of the seed starting mix. Some of you guys are gonna be questioning when to start all your seeds. And it's a very daunting, very frightening topic, especially if you have never done it before. I had the exact same question my first year of gardening. I spent that December going through the internet, 
trying to find those answers. So I took the average across about 60 different websites, but I put the best information that I thought I needed to know into this planting schedule. So the red is when to start your seeds indoors. The yellow is to transplant in the middle. Direct sowing is on the left. So red, yellow, and green. You got your first and last expected frost dates. The average going all the way down and 35 of the world's most popular vegetables on the left. So this is a reference and it should always be used as a reference. When you get closer to your last and your first expected frost dates, check your local weather. Sometimes you can plant your vegetables if you're having a good year a couple weeks earlier. So these are available for zones three to nine so far. But if you wanna pick one of these bad boys up, I'll have it in a pinned link in the description. It completely supports the channel and my YouTube career. I appreciate it. Now that you know five household everyday items that you can use to start your seeds, would you like to know how I built this seed starting setup from the pulleys, raising and lowering my grow lights, to the heat mats, to these shelves? Check out this video next to find out how. Love you, bye.